All right, so we're gonna talk about the, uh, the pin router today. So this is, um, this is my pin router. Uh, there's tons of pin routers out there, all different kinds of styles. Uh, I'm gonna talk about kind of, this is um, kind of a secret weapon for cabinet makers and furniture makers. Uh, it's a great way to make complex shapes quickly. Um, it's more for like um, kind of smaller production items. Um, I wouldn't necessarily use it in a large high production shop. Um, this is kind of the, the, the poor man's CNC or the CNC before there was a CNC, right? This is like the, um, the way to essentially copy different shapes uh, quickly and efficiently and repetitively, right? Like you want to be able to create multiple parts at the same time that are all similar. Um, so anyway, there's, this, this tool allows you to create lots of copies of parts um, with high accuracy thus being a great small production tool, especially if you make a lot of different kinds of furniture, a lot of different kinds of cabinets. This copy things quickly and uh, precisely, and they will be identical every single time, as long as you use the same pattern. Now the thing about the pin router is you have to be able to make some kind of a tool, right? You have to have a tool for your pin router to ride on, right? Because the pin router is essentially a pin that is riding on a tool, right? It will go anywhere where that pin goes, and then you have a bit on top, which essentially copies whatever is going on that, uh, that pattern. So I'll show you this tool. I'll show you why I think it is the secret weapon for cabinet makers and furniture makers, and why you should look at getting one because they are dirt cheap. Um, they can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing, but um, they are an essential tool. I think it's almost as essential as having a, um, a bandsaw, to be quite honest with you. I use this thing every week uh, because we make so many different kinds of furniture. So yeah, let's talk about the pin router and let's, um, let's, let me show you why it's so, so badass. All right, let's start with the anatomy of our pin router. We have a nylon top here, which is awesome. Most will have cast iron, but this nylon is nice and slippery. You have a pneumatic pin here that goes up and down. This is gonna allow you to slide your parts under your pin router. So he'll kind of slide over to the uh, left side. We have this pin actuator that um, moves the pin up and down and basically just feeds air pressure to that pin. Here we have dust collection in the back. I've never actually used this, but I probably should. Um, I bet it works really well. Here we have the uh, area where our pin comes up and down. Also, there's all that, that dust collection in there, but that pin actuates right there. Up to the base of our pin router here, you can see our foot lever. This is what actuates the router bit. There's a carriage on the inside and this activates that carriage that holds the router. And on the inside, you'll see the, the cabinet is lined with this foam, which helps to kind of keep the noise down. It's a very loud machine. Obviously we have a place to plug our router in. You can see these steel pins that this carriage rides on. And it operates very smoothly. You do have to lubricate those, those steel pins from time to time. You see the router bit slides up into the top of the pin router. Now on the back side, there's an arm connected to that foot, which is actually going to uh, move that router up and down. Here we have some, some pins that we can drive up and down, and this actually allows us to micro adjust our pin router to the correct location. We have a couple of pins here that we can actuate to have different levels for our pin router. So you can see our pin router stops on those different pins and it's moved on an arm there. It's actually very accurate, very easy to adjust, and very quick to adjust. Now heading back on the outside of the pin router. So here I'm gonna talk about setup while I run this part. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we have to double stick tape our jig down to our substrate, whatever we're using in this case, I think it's three quarter inch plywood. And we're gonna run this part here. Now we have to set up how high we want that pin to set and then we have to set up how high we want our router bit to go. So here I'm adjusting the um, pin holder basically. And I'll adjust the level on that so that when I activate that pin, at its lowest setting, it doesn't go any lower than I want to. At the highest setting, it doesn't go any higher than I want it to go. I'll get all that adjusted. There I am, setting the height of the pin, or excuse me, the router bit. There's that actuator device. I'll line up in the right where I want it. Continue to run this part, and I can run this thing very quickly. It slides very well on the nylon top, and it's a super easy tool. But here you can see that we have our our uh, Viennese parts cut out and they look fantastic. And you see you can just line these things, stack these parts. This is one of the benefits of this pin router. All right, so you can see we've got this, uh, this piece we made and of course there's just all kinds of tear out in it because my bit's old. But what I wanted to show you was, was just how helpful the pin router can be and what a cool tool it is if you're into making 
lots of different furniture. Um, so now you actually have a pretty good tool here for creating copies of this, right? And this piece here, this is the original. And you can see the back of it's actually hardwood, but over the years, it started to kind of warp and stuff like that. So when you make these tools, you actually want to make these things out of MDF because the MDF just it lasts forever. Like it, it, it's not going to warp on you. It's not going to move. Uh, you, of course, can't get it wet. But um, we do that, or you can make it out of um, Baltic birch. Baltic birch works really good as well. Um, hardwood's pretty much the worst thing you can make these out of because it just, you know, hardwood moves. So anyway, um, I don't think this is kind of cool. Um, I'm a big fan of the pin router. Like I said, you can just do so many things with it. And when you want to create complex patterns like this Dorothy Draper piece, and I forget what collection this is, but um, it's an iconic piece of furniture. Um, Dorothy Draper is known for their Espana chests, which are super iconic, and I'll put a picture of those up there. So this piece took me about 15 minutes to route out on my pin router, and you can see that it took me, there were essentially two steps, right? The first step goes down your first your first dado here, and then you have a second step, which actually creates a rabbit on both sides of your original dado. So you got that second step, and I guess technically there's a third step to cut out the outside. But, um, but yeah, it's a cool tool, and um, yeah, definitely pick up pin routers. Pin routers are cheap right now. Um, they've been cheap for a long time. Most people don't want to deal with them. They're super heavy. Um, they can be dangerous, um, depending on uh, how much experience you have. Um, I recommend an inverted pin router for people to start with, but the the, the pin router where the bits hang in it, those are actually, I think they're far superior. They were just made better um, because I think that's what was made first. And um, anyway, it's nice to be able to see what that bit is doing. Um, the inverted one that I'm using, I hate that I can't see the bit and I'll probably get another pin router at some point, but um, they're super heavy. I mean, they're really big. Um, the big pin routers, I mean, weigh hundreds, if not thousands of pounds, they're massive. So um, I've used the Wood Tech one, I've used the Grizzly one, they're both fantastic. I've used the Onsrud. I've used all kinds of pin routers over the years, and like it's a fantastic tool. And also we have these, these other complex shapes. Um, this is actually for a mirror. So what happened here was the mirror is actually a big, it was a big, I want to say it was like three foot by three foot mirror. So I literally took this piece of three quarter inch MDF, put it on top of that mirror, and double stuck it down, and turned that over and actually ran the mirror on my pin router to create this pattern that we have right here. So I was able to take that shape off an existing part, recreate that shape onto my tool here, and now I can create this pattern anytime I want because I have this tool. So anyway, pin router just allows you to copy so much stuff really quickly and complex shapes. Then here I've got this piece of china cabinet fretwork. I don't know where it came from, but same deal, I went ahead and I put a piece of quarter inch MDF on top of the original fretwork, turned this thing over and ran it on my pin router to create this shape, right? Then I went ahead and I backed the MDF with 3 8 uh, cherry hardwood sticks. That just gives me a nice surface that I can run this thing on the pin router all the time. Quarter inch MDF, especially when it's um, 3 8 wide like this doesn't stand up very well, so you need to put something on it. And I just super glue it all together. But uh, yeah, now I have a pattern that I can run anytime I want for that particular style of china cabinet, whether it's a vintage piece or something new that we make. Um, it's easy to copy. I can I can get it made very quickly. I can tell an employee, hey, I need you to make this. Here's here's the pattern that you need to use, and they can just go make it. I don't they don't have to map anything out. Um, so again, it's a great tool for speeding up production making complex shapes. Um, you could also take this and run this on a hand router, but again, beans that it's so thin here, you would have to have some kind of a base on your router in order to run this, and it would just take forever. Slap it on the pin router and just done. So yeah, it's a good tool, because um, I, can't, I can't say enough things about the pin router. It's just this, it's been a timeless tool that I've used for 20 some odd years at this point. And, um, not many weeks go by that I don't use it. So yeah, pin is awesome. Um, hope you like this video. Like and subscribe if you uh, got some value out of it. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about pin router, let me know. Have a good one.